historical revisionism. Well, that is VHO, uh, VHO.org. And it is a very interesting article. It's called, uh, f written by Leon de Grel, a Belgian Waffen SS general during World's Second World War. Epic The Story of the Waffen SS by Leon de Grel. You are about to hear Lo Leon de Grel, who before the Second World War was Europe's youngest political leader and the founder of the Rexis Party of Belgium. During that cataclys cataclysmic confrontation, he was one of the greatest heroes of the Eastern Front. Of Leon de Grel, Hitler said, If I should have a son, I would like to be like Leon. As a statement and a soldier, he had known very closely Hitler, Mussolini, Churchill, Franco, Laval, Marshal Pétain, and all the European leaders during the enormous ideological and military clash of World War II. Alone among them, he, was sur he, ha he has survived, remaining the number one witness of that historical period. The life of Leon, de Gaulle, of Leon de Grel began in 1906 in Bouillon, a small town in the Belgium Ardennes. His family was of French origin. He studied at the University of Louvain, where he acquired a doctorate in law. He was and is also interested in other academic disciplines, such as political science, art, archaeology, Thomistic philosophy, and so on. As a student, his natural gift of leadership became apparent. By the time he reached 20, he had already published five books and operated his own weekly newspaper. Out of his deep Christian conviction, he joined Belgium's Catholic Action Movement and became one of its leaders. But his passion has always been the people. He wanted to win the crowds, particularly the Marxist ones. He wanted them to share his ideas of social and spiritual change for society. He wanted to lift people up, to forge them for a stable, efficient, and responsible state, a state backed by the good sense of the people and for the sole benefit of the people. He had just more than 2,000 meetings, always controversial, his books and newspapers were read everywhere because they always dealt with the real issues. Although not yet 25, people listened to him avidly. In a few short years, he had won over a large part of the population. On the 24th of May 1936, his Rexis party won against the established parties a smashing electoral vit victory, 34 House and Senate seats. The Europe of 1936 was still split up into little countries, jealous of their past and close to any contact with their neighbors. Leon de Grel saw further. In his student days, he had traveled across Latin America, the United States and Canada. He had visited North Africa, the Middle East and of course all of the European countries. He felt that Europe had a unique destiny and must unite. Mussolini invited him to Rome, Churchill saw him in London, and Hitler received him in Berlin. Putting his political life on the line, he made desperate efforts to stop the railroading of Europe into another war. But old rivalries, petty hatreds, and suspicions between the French and the German were closely exploited. The established parties and the Communist Party worked on the same side for war. For the Kremlin, it was a unique opportunity to communize Europe for after it had been bled white. Thus, war started, first in Poland, then in Western Europe 1940, this has become the Second World War in 1941. Soon, the flag of swastika flew from nor the North Pole to the shores of Greece, to the borders of Spain. But the European Civil War between England and Germany continued, and the rulers of communism got ready to move in and pick up the pieces. But Hitler beat them to it and invaded the Soviet Union on June 22, 1941. For Europe, it was to be heads or tails. Hitler wins or Stalin wins. He was it was then that from every country in Europe, thousands of young men made up their minds that the destiny of their native country was at stake. They would volunteer their lives to fight communism and create a united Europe. In all, they would grow to be more than 600,000 non-German Europeans fighting on the Eastern Front. They would bring scores of divisions to the Waffen-SS. The Waffen-SS were ideological and military and military shook the Waffen-SS were ideological and military shock troops of Europe. The Germans numbering 400,000 were actually in the minority. The one million strong Waffen-SS represented the first truly European army that ever existed. After the war, each unit of this army was to provide their people with a political structure free of the petty nationalism of the past. All the SS fought the same struggle, all shared the same worldview, all became comrades in arms. The most important political and military phenomenon of World War II is also the least known, the phenomenon of the Waffen-SS. 
Leonega is one of the most famous Waffen SS soldiers. After joining as a private, he earned all his stripes from corporal to general for, a, for exceptional bravery in combat. He engaged in 75 hand to hand combat actions. He was wounded on numerous occasions. He was the recipient of the highest honors, the Ritterkreuz, the Oak Leaves, the Gold German Cross, and numerous other decorations for outstanding valor under enemy fire. One of the last to fight on the Eastern Front, Leon de Grel escaped unconditional surrender, escaped unconditional surrender by flying some 1500 miles, 1500 miles across Europe towards Spain. He managed to survive constant fire all along the way and crash landed on the beach of San Sebastian in Spain, critically wounded. Against all odds, he survived. Slowly, he managed to rebuild a new life in exile for himself and his family. For de Grel, philosophy and politics cannot exist without historical knowledge. For him, beauty enhances people, and people cannot improve their lives without it. This philosophy is reflected in everything he does, and his Spanish home art blends gracefully with history. The work of Leon de Grel has always been epic and poetic. As he walks in the environment of his home, one feels the greatness of Rome with its marbles, its bronzes, its translucent glass. One feels the elegant Arabian architecture, the gravity of the Gothic form, and the sumptuousness of Renaissance and Baroque art. One feels the glory of his flags. In this atmosphere of beauty and greatness, the last and most important living weakness of World War II awaits you. Ladies and gentlemen, General Leon de Grel. This is from Leon de Grey, uh, from the de Grey lecture. Ladies and gentlemen, I am asked to talk to you about the great unknown of World War II, the Waffen SS. It is somewhat amazing that the organization which was both political and military and which during World War II united more than one million fighting volunteers should still be officially ignored. Why, you may ask? Why is it that the official record still virtually ignores this extraordinary army of volunteers, an army which was at the vortex of the most gigantic struggle affecting the entire world? The answer may well be found in the fact that the most striking feature of the Waffen SS was that it was composed of volunteers from, more, from, some, from some 30 different countries. What cause guided them and why did they volunteer their lives? Was it a German phenomenon? At the beginning, yes. Initially, the Waffen SS amounted to be less than 200 members. It grew consistently until 1940 when it evolved into a second phase, the Germanic Waffen SS. In addition to the Germans from Germany, Northwestern Europeans and descendants of Germans from all across Europe enlisted. Then in 1941, during the Great Clash with the Soviet Union, rose the European Waffen SS. Young men from the most distant countries fought together on the Russian front. No one knew anything about the Waffen SS for most of the years preceding the war. The Germans themselves took some time to recognize the distinctiveness of the Waffen SS. Hitler rose to the chancellorship democratically, winning at the ballot box. He ran electoral campaigns like any other politician. He addressed meetings, advertised on billboards. His message attracted capacity audiences. More and more people liked what, liked what Hitler what he had to say, and more and more people voted members of his party into Congress. Hitler did not come to power by force, but was duly elected by the people and duly installed as cancer by the president of Germany, General von Hindenburg. His government was legitimate and democratic. In fact, only two of his followers were included in the cabinet. Later, he succeeded always through the electoral process in increasing his majority. When some elections gave him up to 90% of the vote, Hitler earned every vote on his own merit. Well, that is a very, very interesting article on reality of the... International European Fighting Force of the Waffen SS. It tells it in detail. It is a very, very interesting article. As an example here, contrary to what one is told, Hitler had limited power and was quite alone. How this man ever survives these early years to fight comprehension. Only the fact that Hitler was an exceptional genius explains his survival against all odds. Abroad and at home, Hitler had to bend over backward just to demonstrate his goodwill. But despite all his efforts, Hitler was gradually being driven into a corner. The feud between the Sturmabteilung SA and the army was coming to a head. His old comrade Ernst Röhm, chief of the Sturmabteilung, wanted to follow Stalin's example and physically eliminate the army brass. The showdown resulted in the death of Röhm, aided by suicide or murder, and many of his assistants, with the army picking up the pieces and putting the Sturmabteilung or SA back in its place. This is actually the revisionist history 
on vho.org vho.org This is the Division Wallonie where Leon de Grel actually served in. At the end he was general of this division, the Belgium uh, Division Wallonie. This is the Dutch, uh, the Dutch division, uh, Division Netherlands. It was the 23rd SS Volunteer Panzergrenadier Divisions. It also consists of thousands of Dutch volunteers. The young men who joined the Waffen SS The young men who joined the Waffen SS were trained like no other army in the world. Military and academic instruction were intensive, but it was the physical training that was the most rigorous. They practiced sports of excellence. Each of them would, would have performed with distinction at the Olympic Games. Each of them would have performed with distinction at the Olympic Games. The extraordinary physical endurance of the SS on the Russian front, which so amazed the world, was due to this intensive training. There was also the ideological training. They were taught why they were fighting, what kind of Germany was being resurrected before their very eyes. They were shown how Germany was being morally united through class reconciliation and physically united, and physically united through the return of the lost German homelands. They were made aware of their kinship with all other Germans living in foreign lands in Poland, Russia, and Sudetenland, and all parts of Europe. They were taught that all Germans represented an ethnic, an ethnic unity. Here is the 33rd Waffengrenadier Division of the SS Charlemagne. This was the French Waffen SS. This was the 14th Waffengrenadier Division of the SS, the first Ukrainian Waffen SS, and this is their emblem. This is the emblem of the French Waffen SS. And uh, yeah, well, it's all European countries had their own Waffen SS uh, divisions. Over 30 different countries fought on the side in the Waffen SS. Well, the Waffen SS, it's a very interesting article. I suggest you read it full because um, Leon de Grel, General Leon de Grel, uh, speaks about the reality of uh, the Third Reich and Nazi Germany. How Hitler revolutionized the economy by making it free from international Rothschild central banking, the so called international Jewry or Zionism. He created a system that is debtless, that the worth of the money was based on the ability of the German worker to produce goods. It was not backed by gold, because Germany had no gold. And they bartered with all different countries that were willing to trade with Germany, and the economy of Germany boomed. The people, uh, there was also a demographic problem back then, and Hitler then made a campaign to encourage uh, childbirth, the increasing fertility of the population. He did this by actually literally telling the families, by creating parties, such that the people would meet each other and marry and have children. The Zenach system in Konstanz are an example of this, but this was in, through, made through the entire Reich. Special days and special events organized by the state to celebrate unity, such people would meet each other and found families. And these families that bought in a house, for each child that they got, their debt of the house, like a hundred thousand Reichsmark, I believe, I'm not really sure right now on the numbers, but they, their debt was systematically cast off. For every child that they got, 25%. And if they would have four children, they would get the house practically debt free. And in this respect, he raised the fertility rate of the Third Reich inc incredibly. And mothers who got seven or eight children got the Mother's Cross, the highest honor a, f a woman in the German Reich could get. And if you want to know about history, you have to read about it. The revisionist website, what I read about, is a really, really interesting website because it researches practically the factual truth of what really happened during World War II. Holocaust revisionism. You have to read the Leuchter Report and start thinking on yourself and stop believing Hollywood and the dogmatic worldview that is being instilled on us through the system, through the educational system, through the mass media. These books are forbidden in Germany for the very reason that they depict the truth. And if you are caught spreading this in pamphlets or whatever, they can put you in jail for up to 15 years.
I as an example got uh, this book, Sniper, from uh, the memoirs of Sepp Alleberger behind the, on the on the Eastern Front. A very interesting book depicting the true horrors that the Red Army committed, whereas the Germans fought honorably. The book that I read about Leon de Grel, Erinnerung eines europäischen Kriegsfreiwilligen, a volunteer of the Second World War, Division Wallonie. Also, really interesting, practically what you re can read on the link, it's written in here. That is how he looked at did his Leon de Grel while he was young. Another book that I've got is Heinz Ulrich Rudel, the diary, the war diary of Heinz Ulrich Rudel, one of the aces, one of the best aces or Stuka fighter pilots during World War II. Over 1,000 enemies or targets destroyed. And Otto Scorseni, my commando unternehm. One of the first commandos of World War II, one of the greatest, of course, on the German side. You have to read about it and you have to research the truth. One day this will be shown on all t on the TV. The mass media will be used to awaken the masses, but at the same time, you're encouraged to use your own mind and read about it. It is very important for you to know the truth. And no, I'm no hate-filled anti-Semitic asshole. It's just the truth that we portray here. And more and more people find out the truth online. And once the global turning takes place, hopefully during the Zionist-induced World War III, then the Imperial Germans or the so-called Divine Army will intervene and the messianic figure of the third Sargon will appear. Anyhow, hope you enjoyed the video. Cheers.